Hello everyone and good day to you. I hope everyone is doing great in 2022. This is of course Roger with Groovis Games Limited, continuing our solo Crusader gameplay playthrough series, Christmas series. And yes, the table is for the moment still has our Christmas stuff, but it will be going away probably at the start of churn six. It will be gone. So it was very nice for the holidays to have this out. But I want to start with saying Happy New Year to everyone. Whoever you are watching this, I wish you the very best in 2022. Stay safe, happy gaming, and I'm glad that you're here. Welcome to the new subscribers. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to everyone. So it's nice to be back. Let's get rolling into turn five, but I have a little surprise for you and just a few things I wanted to say. Um, Turn four was pretty exciting. You saw my reckless gameplay with Maheliak over there in that chamber. Um, but I thought it showed the game off really good, and you saw it was completely random how that, that came up. Um, so it was, um, and I'm leading up to something with that, but that was a really fun battle. And honestly, when I went in there, I totally forgot about the dual monster um, chamber cards. You know, I totally forgot about it. Um, but what I wanted to say was this, and um, it, Mihaliak was very lucky. We were very lucky in that battle because, you know, I'm not going to take you over there now, but you can, I think you know pretty well, Mihaliak is very versed in chaos warfare and physical warfare. And I'll grab this, but he has that Mallory's Golden Bow, which gives him a plus three to ranged warfare rolls. So he's, pre he's pretty good, you know, early on in the game with those three warfare types. But I want to make mention, you know, there's these... Um, and I have a surprise coming up for you before we get going. I think some of you would like to see. But, you know, there's these dual monster chamber cards. You know, had he... Um, and this kind of leads into what I'm saying. We're gonna, I'm going to share some monsters and creatures and show you how huge the hierarchy of monsters and creatures are in Dungeon Crusade. So hopefully it might be a little bit of a spoiler, but I think you'll enjoy seeing this. And I just want to show you how vast, you know, and big this game is with all the different monsters and creatures. But, you know, had he would run into a monstrous spider, you know, okay, he's good with um, chaos warfare, but, you know, there's arcane, there's mythical. He's not very proficient with that. Um, and I had some other ones here. Definitely the Tenderfoot Warlock. Um, you know, he's good with range, but there again, there's arcane and spiritual. So, um, but yeah, well, he's, he's at a zero with that. Um, same with the vampiric assassin, you know, there's that mythical and arcane. So my point is, you know, had this come up and, you know, something like a, like that tenderfoot warlock and this monstrous spider, it could have been a very different outcome with that battle. Um, but before we get into turn five, I thought that you would like to see, and this is where I said, I hope it's not a spoiler. You may want to go a few minutes ahead, but I wanted to share with you, um, cause I think a lot of people were curious about this. How many monsters and creatures are in Dungeon Crusade? And probably just from hearing me talk, you know, I love all this stuff. And to me, one of the, another huge thing that was paramount is give players a ton of different monsters and creatures to experience in a dungeon crawl. You know, there's just, I forgot, it's definitely over 40 um, unique monsters and creatures, but I just thought we'd show you real quick. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of getting familiar with the level one champions. Um, in the game, there's 10 unique minions, um, three in each group, um, so you know about those. But um, these are some of the champions here, and you've, I'm sure you remember some of these. So the Afflicted, Black Hand Sniper, Sister of the Faith, so that's level one. So we're gonna just briefly, I thought you'd like enjoy seeing this before we get going. Let's take a look at level two champions. And this is the part, whoop, that's level three, sorry. For one moment, I had that out of order. Here we go. So these are some um, level two champions. And um, I just thought you'd enjoy seeing this. So let's take a look at a few. So. And that's what I wanted to tell you as the heroes go, you know, fighting different champions in the chambers, they always change. You're never going to see the same monsters you did at level one. You know, they're always going to change from level to, to level 
in regards to champion monsters. Okay, so there's all different unique ones. So you're always seeing something new, and that was my goal. Give people something always new to experience in the game. So you may not know about some of these. So there's like an orc berserker, skeletal archer. And there, see how they get more evil? That's another dual monster chamber. And the skulls you're going to know, so get more evil as it goes up. There's um, my favorite, Skeleton Warrior. Has a nasty, this is an elite, has regenerate. Um, Black Hand Thurifer. Uh, Prime, Prime Evil Regent. Another one of those cards. Another one of the Black Hand members. Oh, Keeper of the Faith. We saw that earlier, right? We went, was it that one? I think we did. Um, there's a Black Hand Blade Master. You know, of course, Normal and Elite, Skeletal Warrior, Orc Berserker, Primeval Regent, and Skeletal Warrior, and Keeper of the Face. So let's take a level three champions. And I hope you're like taking a look at these. So there are, here's our level three champions. So you can expect to see possibly an Archfiend. Freddy Lopez did a ton of these monsters. Look at those crazy evil eyes. That's just a very, <laughs> Freddy, you're outstanding. Archfiend, Succubus, very nasty ability, fatal charm. You're gonna learn if her ability activates what that defense side on those um, battle tokens are. Very tough. Elder Priest, Freddy Lopez, again, that's Freddy Lopez. It's just, a lot of these monsters are his design that I worked with. I give him an idea, he took it to the next level with his creativity and just mind blowing. Father of the Faith, one of the members of the faction, the Faith. Archfiend, Black Hand Defiler, and see how the skulls are getting more evil. There's a dual monster chamber for level three. Lich Queen, another succubus, that's the normal version. Fallen King, I'll keep it a surprise. This one has a very unique special ability, Hand of the Sovereign. Wait till you experience this guy, but I guarantee, I mean, look at these warfare values, look at the damage, they're definitely going up. Lich Queen, Black Hand Defiler, Father of the Faith, I think that was it, right? Yeah. And finally, the heavy artillery, level four champions. Again, I, I wanted to hang out with you and you know, I like showing you the game and what to expect. Now these right here will really wreck your day. These are some tough monsters and notice some of the warfare values and the damage. And remember, these are just normal. There's expert and heroic monsters. So enraged troll, look at that. Beast of the Faith, Queen of the Black Hand, Enraged Troll, again, Beast of the Faith, Orc Chieftain, Ogre Chieftain, Queen of the Black Hand, and look at that, there's, that's what I'm talking about, Dual Monster Chamber, Death Knight, yes, you know, I love Death Knights, you know there's going to be a Death Knight in Dungeon Crusade, and this is, yeah, Breath of Death, tough special ability. Ancient Horror, Ogre Chieftain, Ancient Horror, and Death Knight. Oh, Crypt, there's a Freddy Lopez. Crypt Fiend, Crypt Fiend, and back to that. Is that it? Yeah, so there you go. Level four. Lastly, to close this out, let's take a quick look at the eight Guardians in the game. So in the creation of Guardians, I wanted to give them kind of a personality, of course, a, a really awesome origin story. So here are the eight um, unique guardians of the game. And again, I would give Freddy Lopez an idea of what I was thinking, but then he just took it to the next level with his creativity and imagination. So we're gonna see one of these spawn, or two of them spawn in this game. So there's Nefarion, big hellhound, Razor Fang, Magmus, this is the toughest guardian in the game. Horus. Red Widow. Interesting backstory. Read the backstory sometime and the, what the origin story I wrote for Red Widow. Very, again, Freddy Lopez, just crazy. 
uh, Bainvik, you've probably seen him before, Dreadthorn, the Undead Dragon, finally the leader of the Black Hand Army, Lord Black Hand. And just real quick, that's called the Trinity of Anguish. I came up with this crazy weapon with these spikes and skulls. And let me tell you, these Guardians can level up to level four. Wait till you see some of the special abilities that these guys have. They are, they can one shot a hero. So there you go. That is some of the monsters, champion monsters, guardians of the game. And I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, let's get into the upkeep phase. Okay, and here we are at our little player area here, hero area. And just want to show you again, so you get this. Um, remember, five phases in a turn. So we are in upkeep right now. So what do we do in upkeep? We're going to check for torches. You're going to roll a d12. If there's any lit torches, neither our hero Mahaliak or the mercenary Zeke has a torch. So we don't got to worry about that. Next, do they have any channeled abilities? Yes. Remember our magic missile? So what we're going to do is just turn it back up. It's ready to use again for the forthcoming churn. Um, do our heroes have any afflictions? No, but remember, Zeke did have that bleeding. We took care of that with the elixir, so he's all good. He will not lose one health at the start, you know, in the upkeep phase. Um, is Yeah, none of our quests are complete, or we'd have to interact with the teleport track. So I think that's it. So my favorite part, as you know, we're going to go over to the dungeon. I have our initiative tokens, and let's talk about what we're going to do or plan out for the forthcoming hero phase. Okay, I was looking over my plan so I didn't keep you because believe me, I study this dungeon and just go, you know, just in my head of what I want to do. So I think I have a pretty good plan that we're going to try out. Of course, Mahaliak is right here in this chamber. So we're starting to knock out the um, Chambers of the Corrupt side quest. So what I think we're going to do is, and of course Zeke is right here, we were going to have him go over and mine, but we're not going to do that. Um, I want to start getting this quest done you know, that deals with the Tomb of St. Viticus north and south here, because we got three more chambers to get. So I think I'm going to, we are going to give initiative token one to Zeke, and to be honest, what I'm trying to do is get enough movement on that one initiative token to get down here and enter into this chamber, sorry, right there. And then he could rally Mahaliak and then they could do this. So they'll have a lot of initiative tokens left um, to even do more. So in saying that, we're gonna give initiative token to, to Mahaliak. Hopefully he can get there and you know they can do that. And then you know right kind of down the way here, is another chamber. So I'm going to just do the same. We're gonna to try to get in there and I'm gonna give initiative token three to Zeke, initiative token four to Mahaliak and they're just gonna to try to get right over there. And then um, basically just come out of there. Whoops, let me try to scooch you down. So come out of this chamber, hit up the final chamber here. We can pick up, sorry, we can pop open a treasure chest um, and then we could head over to our main quest right here. You know, we have to find the wine bottles. Um, so we can just, you know, find a way through the dungeon, then get over to this area and knock out our main quest. Remember, though, two guardians are going to be spawning, so we have to contend with those. So that is um, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to give this to Zeke because they'll be, if my plan goes okay, our plan They'll be done in here, and then they can come over here. Then, I think the very first thing we're going to do is, um, before those two activate, we're going to activate Albus. We're going to get him over here into the village, because he'll get right out. And we're going to hire Matari, who is over there in the mercenary camp. We're going to do some shopping and... I'm going to send Matari next turn because she can't activate this turn because there's no initiative tokens, right? Mercenaries, if you hire them, activate on the upcoming upkeep phase. It makes sense. You guys probably already knew that. And remember, each the mercenary in here will get two, two, and two initiative tokens 
So that's the formula. So we'll get, we'll go shopping with Matari. We'll have a good time. We'll see what, you know, get some gear, um, some healing potions, an elixir. But then we're going to have her travel all the way down next turn into this area, wherever these guys are at. And we're going to get the, the pickaxe and have her do some mining. Doesn't that sound great? <laughs> There's just so much to do in this game. And that's what I just love about it. There's just always something going on. Okay, so our upkeep phase is done. That's our plan. Next up is our encounter phase. I'm going to go over and draw an encounter card. I'll meet you over there. And what do we do on an encounter phase? Simply draw the top card of the encounter deck. And this is, upside down, this is another challenge. Oh, and this is, I should get another card. This is a really good one. I don't know if I want to spoil it. Okay, let's do it. The challenges in this game. I mean, I, I created, I wrote everything in the encounter deck, but the challenges, I absolutely loved writing. This is a very good one. It's very cool. So let's read this together. Hopefully it comes into focus there. Okay, select the hero. Remember, you get to select the hero. It's not random. There was a few people asking that. Events and all that will specifically say randomly select the hero. On challenges, you get to select a hero. And of course, you could read this, you know, before you do it. So let's read what this says. Challenge. Symbols, real quick. If this hero, the yellow eye, if this hero is being tracked by a guardian, they're ineligible. See the red circle with the sword, if you ever see that. If they're engaged in some kind of combat, basically, if they're adjacent to a minion or a guardian, they're ineligible. So you have to select a hero who's not, you know, in, you know, involved with any of those two activities. Okay, just wanted to explain that for you. Select a hero. The hero has discovered a statue of a gargoyle missing its eyes. A message etched, etched into the wall reads, The gift of sight brings fortune, while eternal darkness brings agony. Beneath the statue is one ruby stone gem and one iolite gem. Real quick, those, um, those are precious stones you get from mining. So just wanted to get you informed on that. So that's what ruby stone and iolite are. So we'll see that when we get um, into mining. This hero must place the gems into the gargoyle's eye sockets correctly. Roll the red and blue d6. If each die results in four or higher, the mouth opens revealing one d12, 100 gold. I actually forgot about that. That's a good gold amount. If each die results, result is three or lower, spikes shoot out from the feet. Roll one d6. The result is damage taken. On any other result, nothing happens. Okay, so just kind of picture that. You know, at least when I came up with that, there's a statue of this gargoyle and there's these gems, this red and blue gem. So your hero has to try to put them in the eyes correctly. And so the dice represent the ruby stone and iolite. Let me get those dice. And we gotta select the hero. Um, you know what? Mahaliak's in that chamber, right? We're going to say, baby, before he left, he went over to the wall and he found this, this gargoyle. So we're going to have um, Mahaliak attempt to put these, the Iolite and Ruby Stone, into the gargoyle's eye sockets. So I have her red and blue D6. So basically four, six, we're going to get some gold. One, what, three or under on both dice. We're gonna take damage. Anything other, it's just kind of inactive. It doesn't, you know, it just, the gargoyle sits there. So, and wouldn't you know it, just my freaking luck. I hope some of that bad luck from turn four is not carrying over into turn five. Um, let's see, if, yeah, if each die result is three or lower, spike shoot out from the feet. Roll 1d6, the result is damage taken. Well, Heliac just got hit with these spikes. Let's roll a d6 and see how much damage he took from that. Four, kind of an ouch. Shouldn't have, 
Should head Zeke to it. Maybe we'd have better luck. Okay, so what's he at? There's 10, so we're going to have to go down by 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. He's down to 6 healing po or healing potions. I'm going to get a healing potion. Um, 6 life left. Okay, that wraps up the um, encounter phase. Bad, but still, I'm glad you got to see another challenge. Um, we're going to go right up here, see if a guardian's going to spawn. Okay, and there's, of course, our guardian spawn track. Where's that? I just I always want to show you, just so you know. So remember, just refer to your quick um, reference card. So guardian phase says right here what we're going to do. We're going to roll a d20. It's on 16. And see if a guardian will spawn. And you know what? There it is. A guardian is going to spawn. So... We get the guardian cards here. Let me do this on camera for you. So all, our, all eight guardians are in here. Let's see which one of the two is going to be entering the dungeon. And you know what I'm going to do? Let's roll a D8. So you know, we'll let fate decide. Two. Okay, so one two we are soon going to be combating red widow let's take a look at the warfare values okay left our spiritual wow this well yeah we definitely want zeke the zeke and matari if we're going to hire her um mythical and arcane this is definitely not one for my Haliac. um interesting to note they're of course worth um, five life force because it's a guardian like a boss monster um, it has six um, health but but notice it's going to move three quadrants we're going to get into that but because it's a guardian you have a better chance your hero has a better chance of this guardian dropping loot and having a good gold amount so see the times two so you get two gold and loot rolls for a guardian let's spawn red widow in the dungeon and we are about to spawn red widow into the dungeon so i have the d8 and just so you know it's the exact same method as we use for the minion so you know how to do that you know how to spawn a guardian of course here's her um monster card actually let's go down here because I, I want you to see the roll so we'll just put it right down here there's some space and i swear to god she better not spawn in on two anywhere but two because i want to get this quest done and four okay and remember it's kind of like a clock at least with you know how so you know with the spawn point so one two three and where's four it is four is right here in the war room okay so let's get her miniature and we'll put her like this since the hallway's going like that so that's how you can think of it when um when you when you spawn at least because the guardians are bigger and i want to say this too so people know that um you put them you know going up and down if they spawn you know like that if there's space you spawn them like this also this is what i wanted to point out because some people did not know this this actually doesn't quite fit see how there's part of the guardian going over into these squares those are legal squares to attack because you know Red Widow is going over there, and you're going to find that with a lot of guardians. So you don't have, to, you don't really place a hero right on those squares. If the guardian is like kind of hanging over, taking up that space, that's you know because they're they're huge. You know, right here would be a legal attack, and actually even right here because she is like right there. Okay, so now it is on to our hero phase, and we're at the top of the hero phase which of course we're gonna flip the card over and there is the hero phase. And there's a separate card just for the hero phase. So that's your like part two of your quick reference guide. But I wanna point something out about her um, monster card and her um, movement. So remember we were talking about the dungeon, how it's made up of quadrants, okay? And I just wanna tell you this now so you know. See the three Q? That guardians move by quadrants. They don't 
you know, use the D6 and base movement and all that. They simply move, they make a lot of movement. So she can get around the dungeon super fast. So that's, they're, again, they're on the patrol route system. You never know where they're going to go. Um, so she could make it over by them on her turn. But remember, we're going to come over here to the monster area and place her right there. So she will be sixth to activate. All right. So I'm going to point that out. Um, we're going to go up here and move Albus and go to the village, hire another mercenary. So let's get going with that. Okay, and here's Albus right here. So, of course, he has enough movement. I'm going to roll. So it's, um, well, it's a lot of movement, too. So remember, one, that two, let's put him right over here in the village. So I'm going to place him, move the camera. I'll meet you in the village. Okay, and Albus is in the village here. And I did... But he had 900 gold. And you know what Andrew pointed out? I thought I gave him 1,000. And I remember that churn I was doing so much. But he has 900. So we have that to spend. First and foremost, we're going to get um, Matari. And I'll get the mercenary board to show you. So we're going to hire Matari. And she's our bard. And she's got some really good special abilities. So we're going to put her here. Okay, I just want to get the, there's the mercenary. And so we could see for level one hero, hopefully it's going to come in. It's going to be 300 gold, of course. No other mercenaries at level one can um, be hired in. But at celebration day, of course, this is going to be populated again, but with level two heroes. Okay, and then when they go to the final and second celebration day, um, you know, let's say there's there are two level two heroes. They're removed. They like leave the camp, and level three heroes are populated. But we'll, you know, we'll get to that on celebration day. But for now, we have to pay the three hundred gold to hire Matari. So there is actually one too many. See, there's our three hundred gold right over here. Next thing we're gonna do, or first thing we're gonna do, is remember. She's level one, so we're going to have her special abilities here, and we're going to place them over in the academy. So, so you can see she has Enchanting Him. This is a very good ability. Twisted Melody. That comes into focus. And Alluring Charm. So these are kind of like supporting things, and like kind of, there's some debuffs there for monsters. And then, of course, she has Counterattack. So um, those I placed into the academy. Actually, I could have done that at the start. So I'm just going to take, um, I just wanted to show you those. So those are in there for us to use. Um, next, we're going to get her, there's her starting weapon, bandit blade. Um, one damage, um, nothing to mythical. And finally, let's take a look at her hero card. We can see what she's proficient in and what she isn't. So we can see there her starting health is nine. Essence is, sorry, it should hopefully come into focus for you. There it is. Um, essence is 10, starting health is nine. Um, okay with the attributes. She has a base movement of three with the D6. So let's look at the important stuff here, the warfare types. Well, she is very proficient, of course, in mythical. She is okay with spiritual and okay with um, ranged. Terrible with physical warfare, middle of the road with arcane, and not good at all with chaos. Um, but that's okay because, of course, Zeke will pick up the slack with that. So she would most likely, you know, we're going to partner Zeke and Matari together to take down Red Widow. Okay, so let's put this on her hero card. Her starting health there, starting health here, and like our essence there, just starting essence. So we have Matari in our party now. And I wanted to show you that because I think you're getting acclimated to the game. You're kind of seeing, you know, like how you control a hero and a mercenary. So now we're just getting a little more advanced for you. So you can see controlling three heroes now, or a hero and two mercenary. Um, I'm gonna, I don't wanna keep you. I'm gonna look through the common deck and come back with you and let you see what we're gonna buy for her. Be right back. And I am back. 
I probably looked at everything for 10 minutes, so I didn't want to like take up your time, but I'm going to tell you guys, these are the kind of games right here, whether it's Di special Diablo or Dungeon Crusade, where I get into specking out heroes and just maximizing whatever I want to do. Case in point, with Matari, I want to make her just a powerhouse in Mythical. So she's already got a plus three, so she's very proficient in this. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna even, I wanna bolster that even more because looking back at our friendly, beautiful Red Widow, she has a 13. Um, and she can put two damage on and Matari is going to be like the lead going in to attack her. So we wanna definitely put damage on her before Red Widow puts damage on Matari. So what I decided to do is I hope you're enjoying hearing all of this. So going through the common deck, and remember that Zeke has a mythical weapon. He has a dagger, but it's only plus one, but it's socketed. But here is this rusty dagger here. So we're gonna take, we're gonna upgrade her starting gear. So um, this is a white common, one, one damage, but notice that's a plus two to mythical. Okay, and that's only, what, that's 200 gold, hopefully. So it comes into focus. Yeah, 200 gold. So we're going to upgrade her with this starting off. So we'll take 200 out of there. Okay. Give Matari this. And also, luckily, this popped up. Necklaces. Wait till you see some of the necklaces up there with Epic, the purple and orange. Necklaces are very, very good because you get two different warfare buffs. So here is Myth of the Mind, also 200. And um, this will bolster up her mythical even more by a plus one and will give a nice um, boost to um, her spiritual. So I'm gonna tell you now, we're probably going to, uh, we're going to attack Red Widow in both of those phases with Matari. So we really wanna buff that up. So I'm gonna buy that for 200. She's gonna buy it rather. We'll take that out and she is like really set now um, in regards to mythical warfare. Very proficient. Lastly, we have 200 gold, and I think it would be wise to pick up a healing potion. We'll give that to Matari. And an elixir. Okay? And I think that's it. Now remember, since you know we're in the middle of a turn right now, so in upkeep phase. Um, she's going to enter the dungeon into on the siege tile. So we'll place her there. And um, we're going to, since Albus has another action, we're going to move him and get him back down there to the heroes because they have a little more gold so we can buy some more stuff. And actually, um, he might be moving the pickaxe to Matari. We'll see. Lots to do. So let's generate movement uh, for Albus. Great movement. Five six that's 11 i'll meet you back over at the dungeon and then we'll move him in